اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Validating higher order constructs that is reflective formative in the last session we validated the higher order reflective a reflective construct in this session we are going to talk about how to validate higher order constructs that is reflective at the lower level and formative at the higher level now this lecture is part of the smart pls series in the last session we validated this scale now in this session we are going to validate this scale now these are the three sub dimensions each of them is reflective at lower level but at higher level these three vision development and rewards they form internal marketing in this session we are going to look into how to validate such a scale we are going to use the two stage approach now let's talk about it the two stage approach researchers have proposed a two stage approach as an alternative to the repeated indicators approach now i'm not going to talk about repeated indicators approach for now but there are issues when we are using repeated indicators approach at a higher level hence the two stage approach is suggested in fact research has proposed two versions of the two stage approach the first the embedded two stage approach and the disjoint two stage approach now this two stage approach the disjoint one differs slightly from the embedded two stage approach for example while the embedded approach models the entire higher order construct in its first stage the disjoint approach initially only draws on the lower order components hence the denominations embedded and disjoint now how does this work in smart pls i'm just going to talk about it in a while i'm going to explain the difference when i'm practically explaining the two approaches as both versions of the two stage approach lead to similar results you can see the paper by chia there is no compelling reason for preferring one over the other in the following we introduce first the disjoint two stage approach for reflective formative type higher order construct however this one is preferred although it leads to similar results the disjoint two stage approach now have a look here so you've got stage 2 of the disjoint two stage approach now this is the stage 2 whereby you've got this higher order construct measured formatively and you've got your lower order construct that is the composite scores latent variable scores generated in the first or at the first level but look at the other lower order construct you see the indicators instead of the latent variable score if this was embedded two stage approach there would have been just one variable that is the latent variable score for this variable now how do you get latent variable score i'm just going to tell you now the disjoint two stage approach differs from embedded two stage approach in the specification of both stages rather than using the repeated indicators approach in stage 1 the disjoint two stage approach considers only the lower order construct of the higher order construct without any higher order construct in the path model now when you are using disjoint two stage approach at the first stage now since these are two stages so at the first stage we only have the lower order constructs in the model just the way we did it earlier when we were doing our measurement model so we put in all our lower order constructs irrespective of whether they belong to a higher order construct or not these are directly linked to all other constructs that the higher order construct is theoretically related to now to execute the disjoint two stage approach researchers then need to save the construct scores that is your latent variable score but only those of the lower order components so we only save the scores of lower order components and stage 2 we use these scores to measure the higher order constructs however different from the embedded two stage approach all other constructs that do not have a higher order construct will remain and will be utilized as is as they were at the first stage that is for example y5 here has three indicators so in stage 2 this will serve as is we are not going to measure 
y5 based on its latent variable score rather we are going to use its indicators this is how it differs from your embedded two-stage approach now how to do this let's have a look now here is my model let's go to measurement model first now we have already done this and this is the measurement model at lower level now these are the three sub dimensions of internal marketing these are the sub dimensions of internal service quality as in the model and these variables here all other variables are already measured on lower order level and the other variables here all these variables your these mediators and these are the moderators and this is the dependent variable all these are lower order constructs they do not have any higher order construct only these three they form internal marketing in this session we are going to focus on this one here so the first stage you only add your lower order constructs whether it has a higher order construct or whether a particular construct is at lower level and does belong to a higher order construct it does not matter you simply add all your lower order construct just the way i have and you link them now how did i come up with this model the video will be shared in the description but in this case let me briefly go through it this is my iv now these are the sub dimensions for internal service quality that is a higher order construct measured as a reflective a reflective and these are lower order constructs now since these are independent variables these are mediators this these two are moderators and this is my dependent variable so i linked the sub dimensions of all my independent variables with the mediators and then with the dv as well and then the mediators linked to the dv as well and the moderating variable since they are moderating just one relationship in the study they are linked to the dv as well now once you are done with this you have to check the reliability and validity of all these constructs and report it now once you have reported it then you validate the higher order construct you do not simply validate the higher order construct without validating the lower order construct so once they are validated and how the video will be shared in the description that is part of this series that has been done earlier so how we get latent variable score so i can validate this particular construct that is reflective formative higher order construct go to calculate plsscm path standardized default start calculation now this is your graphical output in this case more or less i'm interested in report so once you get the report again validate the lower order constructs first check their reliable outer loadings then check their reliability and validity and check their discriminant validity report all these and now we are going to go for the validation of higher order construct that is reflective formative so the first stage is we need to get our latent variable score now where are your latent variable scores here they are look at this latent variable scores latent variables and their scores so what you can do is simply export to csv now they are copied now this is my data file and i'm going to come towards the end of the data file the top cell the last top cell paste in them here i do not need this delete and here are the latent variable score now each of your lower order construct now is transformed into a single variable these three will now serve as indicators for the higher order internal marketing construct or rather they will form the internal marketing construct i've previously used in the last session reliability assurance empathy and responsiveness as indicators for internal service quality that was higher order reflective reflective construct all these others you do not need these because in this series we are not going to use the embedded two stage approach if i was to use embedded two stage approach then at the higher level i would have used these scores but for now let's keep it i may do a video on this as well now once you've got this scores save it and go back back let's save it let's copy it let's duplicate this one 
copy resource and right click paste resource that is your measurement model for higher order construct that is internal marketing just press save now again I've already imported that file but you need to re-import this file after adding these latent variable scores how to do this right click import data file now where is that data file here is that data file open and you name it import now here is your data file data underscore two now let's go and did make up our model so you open this file here now all my lower order constructs will remain as is and instead I'm going to remove this here I'm going to remove this here I'm going to remove this one here now this is a higher order construct what you can do is you can simply remove these and make a reflective a reflective higher order construct so let's remove these because these are already validated which one is your data set so we will select our data set and come down okay so vision development and rewards now these are the three indicators now because now we are doing higher order construct validation so these three indicators will form internal marketing and look at the arrows and we need to change the arrows right click inward measurement model here they are now move it here and what about internal service quality now this is higher order reflective reflective so i'm just going to select the four indicators that were that are or that were latent variables in at the first stage isq press enter this is fine and now i'm going to link the variables here this one here this one here this one here this one here internal marketing with dependent variable and this one here now this is your model let's go to tools and let's magnify it a bit this is too much now this is better look at this i am internal marketing okay it's i am instead and press apply now internal marketing reflective formative this was reflective at first stage when we assessed our measurement model at the lower level now that we are validating at this one at higher level so this one is reflective formative and this is reflective reflective look at the arrows pointing at the higher level now how do we validate validate this scale now these this scale has already been validated in the last session reflective reflective before we go on and do it practically let's look at the theory of it validating higher order constructs when evaluating higher order models the same model evaluation criteria generally applies for any pls scm analysis however higher order constructs need to consider two additional measurement models for which the evaluation criteria apply the measurement model of lower order constructs again when you have a higher order construct the first step is that you validate all your lower order construct before generating the latent variable score and using them to create your higher order constructs the measurement model of the higher order construct as a whole now next thing is you get your higher order constructs just the way we developed it now you're going to get the latent variable scores and add them to your project and then create a construct at a higher level based on the latent variable scores for the lower order constructs reflective formative higher order construct the destroying two stage approach now in stage in stage one the estimation of the measurement model assessment for the lower order components is based on standard model that is again the reliability and validity is established then in stage two the latent scores are used from stage one and then you create your higher order model this is how you begin your second order first hocs or higher order constructs formative measurement model the results support the convergent validity so the first step is assessing convergent validity how do you assess convergent validity at a higher level for a reflective formative higher order construct 
What you need to do is you need to link your higher order formative construct with the global measure of that construct. Now you cannot have a global measure after you have collected the data. Now you have to be very considerate that when you are developing your questionnaire, you have an item that is a sum or in total a summary of the whole scale. Let's say we can have for internal marketing, let's say we can have a statement like the organization has vision, property rewards and development initiatives for its employees. Now this is a sort of a global measure that is measuring all the dimensions of internal marketing in my study. So it's sort of a global measure that is summarizing the whole construct. Now we have to have this before we start collecting the data before or actually at the time when we are designing our questionnaire. Otherwise you cannot use it and you will have to rely on the other two assessment criteria. So in this case, I've got one here. So how to validate it? Let's go back. I cannot use it. So let's go back, save it. Now you have to create a new model for that new PLSSCM model. And I can say higher order construct convergent validity. You save it. You have to select your data set. Make sure that you properly select your data set. And let's use this internal marketing measured at the higher level and let's move the indicators select this and where is my global measure where is it where is it here is my global variable add it enter now link the two and go to calculate plssCM algorithm everything checks out Look at this 0 0.800 and what was the criteria that it should be 0 0.7 at least. So the convergent validity for internal marketing is established. Assessment at stage two, the first step checks out. Now the next step is we are going to look at the VIF values. Second, find that the higher order construct measurement model is not negatively affected by the collinearity and assess the VIF values of the LOCs for the HOC. So where are the LOCs for HOC? Here they are. Now these are the LOCs for this HOC. Now we can go back, back and open our model. Now here it is. So validating formative indicators, again, we have to look at the VIF values for the higher order construct. That is, as we said, find that the HOC measurement model is not affected by collinearity and assess the VIF of the LOC. So where are the VIF of the LOCs? And they should be less than five. Here it is. So go to calculate PLS algorithm, start and go to reports. VIF values, where are they? Here they are. And look at this. VIF for the LOCs of internal marketing. Are they less than five? Yes, they are less than five. So no issue of multi-collinearity. This stage done. Let's go to the next stage. And if they were greater than five, you, you would dismiss the formative measurement model. Now we do not have any issue. And next thing is you start with assessment of your outer weights. Look at the outer weights and see if they are significant. Now, if they are not significant, then we will use this route. But if they are significant, you can move on and still we are going to assess the loadings anyway. So how do we assess the significance of outer weights? Again, let's go back and now we need to run the bootstrapping. All good. Let's okay. I'm going to use one tailed because I know the direction of relationships. Let's start. Now here are the results. So go to report and have a look here. Out of weights. And we are interested in this here. These three. Vision development rewards because these are formative indicators for 
internal marketing, forming internal marketing. Are they significant? Yes, they are significant. So we do not have any issue of out of it. Now, once this step is done, let's assume if this value would have been insignificant, what would you do then? If the outer weight is not significant, you assess the indicator outer loadings for the formative indicators. and See if the outer loading is less than 5. If the outer loading is greater than 5, then you can keep the indicators although your outer weights are insignificant. So the first step, look at the outer loadings. Now let's assume, for example, let's say one of them is insignificant. So you go to outer loadings. Where are your outer loadings here? And look at this. And have a look here, greater than 0 0.50. So even though one of them that we assumed was insignificant, that is their outer weight was insignificant, but now their outer loading is greater than 0 0.5. Let's say if this outer loading was less than 0 0.5, what will happen then? The outer loading is less than 0 0.5, then you need to assess the significance of the formative indicators. and if it is significant but it is less than 0.5 you can consider the removal but we will keep it we will keep our indicators now let's have a look here let's assume this loading is less than 0.5 but it is significant so you can keep it you do not need to delete this indicator that is part of forming internal marketing but what if this would have been insignificant, the loading less than 0.5, the outer weight insignificant, then you should remove it rather than keep it, keeping it because it's not forming the higher order construct. Now a quick recap of how to validate your higher order construct. Now I know that internal marketing is my higher order construct that is measured using these three indicators. These three indicators at lower level are measured using multiple indicators here, vision, development, and then rewards. Now the first step again, you have to validate them at the lower level like this. Look at this. So you make up your model like this, whereby you have all your variables at the lower level with their indicators and you check them for their reliability and validity and report them. Now, once you have checked them for their reliability and validity and have reported them, then what you do is you get their latent variable score. Where is their latent variable score? Here it is. Latent variable scores. Now you export it to CSV and paste it into your Excel sheet here. Just like this. And once you have pasted it, re-import this file into your Smart PLS project. And once you have imported it, now we are going to go at the higher level. Again, what I've done is I've created the higher order construct model. That is this one here. Now I'm using the latent variable score for vision, development and rewards that are my lower order constructs and IM is my higher order construct. Once you add them by default, they are reflective. So you have to invert the measurement model here by clicking here. And now you validate your higher order construct. In the last session, we did validate this construct as well reflective uh, reflective now how do we validate this again the first step is check the vif values to do so you need to go to pls scm algorithm and the next step you check it for your significance of outer weights and then the loadings so significance of outer weights and if the outer weights are not significant check the outer loadings if outer loadings are greater than five you are good to go if they are less than five check the significance of outer loadings and here are the significance of outer loadings. Let's quickly go through it. Here it is. Your outer loadings and their significance. Your outer weights and their significance. I hope this session would have helped you understand how to validate higher order reflective formative construct in Smart PLS4. Now, in order to know more about it, you can read this very good article on validating higher order constructs. Thank you very much.